one for some students, um, for those that are talking when I'm talking. First of all, I just told you on the last, on the last problem, if you see the double angle, look, for the double ang look to use the double angle formula. So a lot of you guys would look at this one and say, well, OK, let's use the double angle formula. But the problem is, now what are you going to do? You can't apply the zero product property because you don't have anything equal to 0. right? And if you add it to the other side to get 0, then you don't have a product anymore. So if we apply the double angle formula, we kind of take us to a dead end at this point, at least for what we've learned. So this is not actually going to be helping us. And if you remember, what we did is that when we first learned about solving with double angles, we talked about, um, or multi-angles, we talked about, well, we can, if there's only a term isolated, if we have one term isolated, we can just solve this as is, right? Yes. We can just solve this for 2x. And what I did is sometimes I said, let, you could use substitution if you want to. Let 2x equal theta. Let's just do that. So then I'm just going to rewrite the problem as sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Now again, we don't want to forget this. All right? But now I'm just going to use this to solve. So I say sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Well, I've got to figure out when is sine negative. So remember, sine is the y coordinate, negative 1 half has, if you remember, this coordinate point is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So that's when the y coordinate is, po is um, 1 half. But we need to be at negative, so it needs to be down here. Same reference angle as pi over 6. So that means the angle needs to be? Huh? Sine is y. Sine is the y coordinate. Right? <laughs> yes? <laughs> so theta equals 7 pi over 6. Uh, however, there is an important thing there. There is no restrictions on the domain. It says the general solution. That means all the remaining solutions. So if I have 7 pi over 6, how many times can I keep on getting this as a solution? Infinite many times. Now, I don't want you to confuse this angle right there, because this is your solution. And I, to get back to the solution, I have to add 2 pi. And how many times can I add or subtract 2 pi? Infinite many times. So we use a variable n to represent that. Then we have our other angle here, which would be 11 pi over 6. So theta equals 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. However, our example, we're not solving for theta, guys. We're solving for x. So we can write this as 2x is equal to 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And 2x is equal to 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now, to solve for x, divide by 2 on both sides. And I get x is equal to 7 pi over 12 plus pi n. And x equals 11 pi over 12 plus pi n. So does anybody have any questions on where the pi n or 2 pi n came from? or the answers, the 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6? Or just any questions in general? Yes? Huh? Oh, you're, but that's not on this. You're done with this. OK. 